Today on Locked On Rockies, Montero keeps mashing. The Rockies show some fight and come back after being down. The fans reacted to some purple row polls, and I'm curious, after yesterday's big football news, are you more interested in watching the 2024 Colorado Rockies or the 2024 Denver Broncos? You are Locked On Rockies, your daily Colorado Rockies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On Rockies fans, welcome into the Locked On Rockies podcast for today, the fifth day of March in the year 2024. I am your host of the Locked On Rockies podcast, Paul Holden, bringing you your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your team every day. If your team is the Colorado Rockies, guess what? You're in the right spot because that's what we do around here each and every day is talk Rockies baseball, free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and available on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel, where you can be part of the show just like Derek Giles, I, I'm hoping I'm still pronouncing his last name, Tovar is going to be a star. If I'm not mistaken, he led us in RBIs last year as a rookie. He can really bring runs in. This spring, we are doing a really good job of hitting with runners in scoring position, not to mention Montero. I feel good about our future. I am excited as well. I mean, it was a, a really good... A, a, it, as much as we get, can't get overly excited about the spring training Colorado Rockies because it's spring training and it's not the real season. Multiple games, four out of the last five scoring double digit runs. That means something is working. It's got to transfer over. It's got to get better. But to sit there and deny that there is something there with this offense that would be disingenuous because again, there's still so much to be to, 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 to be determined from this team, but this team wasn't doing that last spring. It wasn't doing that last season at all. So to see these guys have good, solid, strong approaches, and, and mind you, you know, at this point in spring, you're getting a couple of of looks at some bigger name guys. You're getting a couple more looks at some regular everyday guys. It's still a bunch of young guys mixed in there and, and, and young pitchers and pitchers not using all as much in all of their stuff yet. But I ain't going to sit here and be disappointed in the Rockies offense right now in spring, and I'm hoping it translate there. I'm excited too there, Derek. I appreciate it there. So I uh, uh, appreciate the comments. We'll always dive into those. So please remember, if you like the show, go over there and, uh, and read them. We're going to read another comment here uh, in segment number two from every day or Lux Ace coming up as well. Uh, we're going to talk about the offense. We're going to talk about the game yesterday. We're going to talk about Montero continuing to swing a good bat. Uh, Purple Row had an interesting fan a couple of fan surveys that we're going to look at. And uh, for segment number three, I wanted to uh, play a classic sports radio talk show segment idea, which is, are you more interested in the 2024 Rockies or 2024 Broncos after the uh, Broncos make that change? And of course, you're like, well, why are we talking about the Broncos on a Rockies podcast? Because uh, as you all know, their lives are usually intertwined. Uh, let's get into all the fun today. But before we do, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today. You'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. Rockies. Get the win yesterday over the Giants, 12 to 10. And uh, it started off pretty bad for the old Rockas there. As uh, heading into the uh, heading into the bottom of the fourth, the Rockies were down seven to one yesterday. But in the bottom of the fourth and the bottom of the fifth, the Rockies put up an eight spot. And then in the seventh, they get a th uh, another three to take the lead and take the win. The Giants get a run back uh, in the ninth to cut the lead down from three to one. But that's a good hard-fought ball game there, and and when you're looking at some of the key contributors here in that game, a good chunk of them are starters mixed in with a couple of prospects who are definitely looking to make a uh, make some noise. Brenton Doyle uh, gets two hits in the game and a walk. A really great day at the dish for him as we continue to watch his offensive growth. Arguably, uh, the the player that is one of the most interesting players and exciting players to watch their offense in the spring is going to be Brenton Doyle. He's been swinging a solid bat so far. And when you get three at-bats and you're getting on base every single time, 
I love that. I think so that would be what four at bats actually technically because the walk doesn't count or I can't remember if that actually goes. No, it should be. Uh, I think so, an at bat still counts. I can't remember. It's early. <laughs> it's early in spring too for me. Chris Bryant, strong day at the dish with uh, with a three run homer as well. Jordan Beck bringing in a couple of RBI. I believe it was like a late game triple or double that was key in that seventh inning there. Uh, Brendan Rodgers, no hits yesterday, which is, you know, of course, is always a bummer. But uh, Ryan McMahon gets a hit and a walk. Montero, one appearance, uh, one plate appearance, one hit, one home run, one RBI. <laughs> money, easy money for our uh, for our guy Montero there. Totally a, a, a nice uh, couple of at-bats as well, getting a hit and a walk in his two at-bats. Sean Bouchard, nothing going there. Sam Hilliard, you know, trying to continue to fight for his spot, a, a hit in that one. And, and I am keep bringing this up because it's, listen to these names that I'm saying, and, and we're talking about Alan Trejo with a couple RBI yesterday and a couple of hits. I mean, these are all names that are going to impact the everyday lineup for the Colorado Rockies. This is something, I mean, why we, why I went go and, and, and why you sit there and you talk about this offense is the fact that these are all players that need to contribute and they are contributing. They contributed in this game and they have contributed so far in the spring. Montero uh, here, this is from Patrick Lyons, of course, uh, one of the best Twitter followers, uh, Twitter follows for Rockies baseball uh, here is Rockies, uh, uh Montero. Number one in slugging percentage in MLB during spring training among all qualified batters at a thousand. Uh, and the uh, let's see, I don't know if this is still true, but earlier uh, Patrick tweeted uh, before the game, no one has more home runs three than Montero of the Rockies this spring. That these are the step. I mean, this is the these are the progression steps of Montero. That that's where you really start to get excited. I mean, a big power bat into the lineup for the Rockies. We can't overstate it. I can't keep bringing it up enough. If Montero is, makes the everyday lineup and he's able to bring the thump that he, that has been advertised, it's going to be a massive lift for the Rockies. It's a team that's going to score more runs. It's a team that's going to be more competitive at Coors Field. Montero can lead the way here as a young guy with power mixed in with the fact that there's better offensive performance and more power looming with some of these young guys than we might think. You know, it, it's crazy to say this, and, and I know that uh, there's a lot of hesitation here, but I just want to remind you folks that last year, Brenton Doyle hit 10 home runs. I mean, he's power isn't his game, but there is that, you know, if, if you can get 10 to 12 home runs from Doyle and then everyone, you know, Tovar, Montero, Jones, they're hitting 20 in the, in the 20s range. Chris Bryant, Brendan Rodgers, Ryan McMahon, Charlie Blackman, all looming. I mean, there is lots more home run potential there. Chris Bryant, you know, good to see Chris Bryant with a couple of spring training home runs as well. The power, If the power is coming back to KB, if the swing is coming back to KB, the offense is becoming much deeper. The offense is becoming much better. And it's another example of, again, are you more confident and, and when you're when you're projecting for the Rockies, do you feel more confident in this team of youngsters going up there to compete against this major league hitting versus the team of veterans that was being put out at the beginning of the season last year? And I, I, the regular season has to start before we can answer that question. I, I really do think that as much excitement that we can build around the Rockies offense so far this spring is we have to keep in the back of our mind how much this team can strike out and how much this team can struggle against off-speed pitching. A lot of what we've seen, you know, spring training, a lot of people building up, the velocity is coming up, and, and you know, tr everyone's trying to get their off-speed pitches a little more sharper. It, it, it's fine-tuning everything. Basically, what I'm saying is this can't be the mountaintop. You cannot plateau here. It's it's Use this launching board, this, this strong offensive foundation that you have been building in Coors Field and springboard off of it into the regular season. It's going to be curious to see what adjustments the team makes on you know a day-to-day -day basis to handle really good teams and handle really good pitching staffs because right as the season starts as soon as spring training is over and the games really start mattering you are playing some of the best in the business with some of the best arms in the business both in Coors Field and on the road so we'll have to before we can go completely bonkers over the offense 
we we got to, you know, pad the brakes a little bit with the spring training. But I'm not going to sit here and not tell you that I am uh, not enthused and absolutely over the moon with Montero's uh, spring so far. And, and one of the arguably the most important players to have a good spring is having a good spring right now. And that's awesome. Sprinkled in with exciting other things like a better looking offense from Brett and Doyle guys, uh, you know, working up and, and getting healthier and, and getting back in the groove of things from the veterans. I mean, finally, you know, Brendan Rogers has to have a sigh of relief that he's played, he's played in a few spring training games and things are okay. So, there's a lot to be excited about by this offense and especially by Montero's uh, growth here this spring, but it's got to carry throughout the spring and then it's got to carry for six more months. It's a long, long season baseball, as you all know. So we don't want the Rockies to flame out too fast here at, at, at spring training, but I can't sit here and, and deny that I am not way, way more excited about the Rockies offense going into the year this year. And I'm I'm really liking what I'm seeing from some of these youngsters, primarily Montero. All right. Uh, let's uh, there were some uh, interesting purple row polls here from Samantha Bradfield that uh, uh, they posted on Friday. And I want to talk about a little bit as well, because uh it leads directly with young guys' performances, and uh, we'll go through that coming up here in just a little bit on the Locked On Rockies podcast. Before we do that, though, got to tell you about some of the folks that help make this show possible, and that includes Prize Picks. Prize Picks, a new sponsor here on the Locked On Rockies podcast, and uh, I'm going to tell you. All about them. Price Picks is North America's largest daily fantasy sports platform. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, you pick more than or less than, more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And the app has a fun new feature called Demons and Goblins. Demons picks are demon picks are marked in red, and they are scary picks that accelerate your heartbeat because you can win big money as in a hundred times your money. So if you bet $10, you can win a thousand. But if you're more cautious, you can always pick a goblin pick marked green because it is designed to keep you in the green and allow you to land consistent victories. The payout is less than a demon pick, but your chances of keeping your winning streak going are higher. If you're into the NBA, you can pick more than less, more than or less than on everything from three pointers made to turnovers committed. And for spring training baseball, you can pick more than or less than on pitcher strikeouts and first inning runs. So download the app today and enter code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars. Again, that's code Locked On MLB all one word, and in lowercase letters, and get that first deposit match up to $100. Join Prize Picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Locked on Rockies podcast. We are free and streaming on your favorite streaming service, bringing in your daily Colorado Rockies talk right here on the Locked on Podcast Network here on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show by firing off your Rockies hot takes. Like Lux Ace saying, I find it kind of dumb how MLB posted Ellie's, as in Ellie De La Cruz, home run off of us multiple times, yet doesn't post how we scored 10 runs off of them. Ezekiel Tovar hit a grand slam and how we scored 30 runs and in three days. Keep sleeping. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the thing is there. I, I, I get that. I totally understand. I saw that too. I mean, it's, it, it's a thing, where, again, where the Rockies got to prove it. I, I mean, to, to earn that, you know, the social media cred, to earn the 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 spot on those things. If you are or the Rockies, if you want to be in those, you know, be promoted by Major League Baseball, which is kind of crazy to say this stuff, they got to prove it. They are in no rush to, to highlight the Colorado Rockies. They are in a rush to highlight Ellie De La Cruz, one of the most exciting players in all of baseball on an exciting Reds team that, that really surprised people. The Rockies can get, you know, this, this Ellie De La Cruz treatment uh, there, if, you know, from Nolan Jones or some of the young guys, if they perform and win ball games in the regular season. Now the Reds get the benefit of not playing in one of the most stacked divisions in all of baseball and get to, uh, you know, enjoy a playoff race against much, much weaker teams uh, than the Rockies do. So that kind of factors into it there, but yeah, I mean, it's a little frustrating, but Remind yourself that Ellie De La Cruz is like a 
face a baseball type of guy. So it, it's definitely frustrating. It's definitely, uh, you know, and you know, I get that, especially when the Rockies have uh, Ezekiel Tovar, who should be considered one of the most exciting young guys in baseball and should be talked about a lot more. Uh, but sometimes when you see that stuff, you do got to kind of just shrug your shoulders and be like, eh, whatever, you know, you can always do the, the classic, uh, YouTube thing where it's basically, uh, 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 was it Chris Paul hits the three to cut the lead down to 42? You know, I think I can't remember when Ellie hit that home run in that game, but kind of a similar thing, a, a related thing. So I feel you, Lux. Uh, I, I know that the, the frustration's there, but, you know, Ellie De La Cruz is a, is a, is a big name player. But, uh, you know, hopefully the Rockies are able to, to, to craft their way onto those cool posts as well. Because, man, the, the, the social media posts, the new angles of, uh, of, of the hit, I, I'm, you know, I like the pitching ones. The hitting ones are a little harder to see. I kind of like the crisp, you know, uh, kind of easier to, to see not as much motion on the, on the home run or, or the offensive clips, but the, the social media upgrades, it looks like the clips are, 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 that are coming in. They got some cool stylized on them. Uh, should be lots of, should be lots of cool stuff coming out. I, I'm really curious to see how the MLB broadcast will also influence the, Rockies social game and and Rocky and what they put up there and and, and what the uh you know the type of promotional content and things that they'll get uh from that so uh thank you Lux for your comment and for always tuning in I know you're an everyday or out there hey uh, I didn't get to this off the rip but just in case uh if you do want more uh, sports coverage locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube and now it's available on Amazon fire TV in the free fire TV channels app Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Okay. Uh, I wanted to read these polls here from Purple Row here. They took some uh, some polls last Friday. These are from uh, uh, February 29th. So, yeah, we could go there. Uh, Rockies react survey results. Sean Bouchard is the favorite to start in right field by Samantha, uh, Bradfield over here. So they asked, and, uh, who will be the opening day right fielder? And 43% of the vote says Sean Bouchard is going to take the spot. 24% for Charlie Blackman, 16% for Chris Bryant and Michael Tolia, 10% other at 7%. That's an interesting one. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, you know, I, I, Sean Bouchard, you know, is someone that's kind of got to reintroduce himself to us at least with, uh, you know, after the injury and, and, and coming back, uh, coming back from that, which is a pretty massive one, but, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a rough start in his first 11 at bats here so far for Sean Bouchard, only one hit in those 11 at bats. He's got two RBI, a couple of stolen bases. Don't need to go through the, uh, the whole line there. Cause it ain't pretty, but be interesting to see. I mean, he's someone that's certainly, uh, has uh, has made is uh, made it interesting, and he's certainly primed to be a major leaguer. He's uh, you know he's come up to the majors now in 2019, 2020, 2022, 2023. Uh, so these are uh, at least uh, you know some some numbers. I mean, are these spring training numbers? I can't remember, but I know he was hurt last year. But Sean Bouchard uh, also is competing with someone that I think really making uh, making his case for to be the right fielder. And uh, I think it's going to be an interesting battle between Michael Tolia. I, I don't think that Chris Bryan or Charlie Blackman are the everyday right fielders. I don't think that if Chris Black, uh, Chris Black, <laughs> if, if if Chris Bryant or Charlie Blackman are the everyday right fielders, that's a problem. That's a big problem for the Rockies right there, because that means y you have three young guys that are either hurt, underperforming, or aren't living up to to, to expectations. And man, that just it, it just would kind of deflate a little bit of the momentum as that as the Rockies right side of the field continues to, to be figured out. Michael Tolia here in 20 at bats so far this spring, seven hits, uh, including two home runs, six RBI, a 350 average, an OBP of 435, and an OPS of 1135. Uh, you know, I mean, if you're just going off of that, you're feeling a little bit more confident in Michael Tolia here but uh you know he's got nine more at bats plenty of spring to plenty of spring training left to be shown but i i personally think that michael Tolia is the is the favorite to land the right field spot i think that the rockies are going to like that switch hitting thing they're going to like that they have another person that they can slide into first base and if needed i mean 
we'll see. Hunter Goodman still looming as well. But I, I, I was really interested by this poll to see Charlie Blackman coming in at 24%. I mean, will Charlie Blackman play some right field this year? Absolutely. I mean, that's that that's for sure. But again, Man, I, I really think the Rockies are not going with what they're hoping for, going with their plan, going with what they want to do if they're consistently playing Chris Bryant and Charlie Blackman in right field. That means that they're, that a problem has happened for the Rockies, that an issue has, aro uh, has arose, and that's not going to be a good thing. If the it, it, But plenty of spring to see how this uh, this competition is going to, to shake out. I just think that... Uh, it's going to take a little bit more time for, for Bouchard here. And uh, people really excited about the prospect of, of Bouchard. He, he definitely came in and make, uh, made some noise, that's for sure. Uh, 38 at-bats last year before getting hurt. Four home runs, seven RBI, uh, 316 average, 372 OBP, and an OPS of 1.056 for Sean Bouchard. Sh Sean Walter Bernard Bouchard. That's a name. Wow. Watching that. But uh, yeah, uh, so with this poll, got to disagree. I, I really don't think that uh, I, I'm going Tolia. That's where my vote would be. Uh, certainly not Charlie Blackman or Chris Bryant, because that would be a uh, a big, big problem. Uh, just a couple of things uh, here about uh, about Bouchard. Bouchard made his ML. This is from uh, Samantha here on Purple Row. Bouchard made his MLB debut on June 19th, 2022 and hit 297, 454, 527 games during his rookie campaign. He was poised to build on that in 2023, but suffered a ruptured bicep in spring training and didn't see MLB action until September. In 21 games, he went, 36, he went 316, 372, 684. So far in 2024, he's gone 200, 429, 403 games, but there's a lot of spring left. Mind you, again, uh, this was from Friday, so I think some, some more stats over the weekend there um the uh the, to, to change that uh to change that uh okay and then the second one here is uh rockies fans grade the team's off season uh four percent of the votes give it an a 13 percent give it a b 27 percent give it a c 30 percent give it a d and 26 percent give the rockies an f we've talked about this and and we've talked about the the grading of the rockies off season i i, I just again when I'm asking, or when I when I would talk to fans who 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 gave an F or a D, I would just implore how you would feel if the Rockies, you know, spent big on a big contract for a player, you know, a good player, not a great player, a good player that blocks the young guys that that you know takes away. Say they brought in a really great right fielder or something like that, or a good right fielder. What do you do with? three prospects that that were hoping for that spot and hoping for the bench spot to be be able to get some time there. I mean, do you really think the Rockies were going to get Otani? Do you think the Rockies are really going to get some of these big name free agents in an incredibly expensive offseason? I don't think it was, you know, it's not a not it's not an A. It's not a it's not a B off season. I, I get that, but but I, I just have I really just have an issue with saying that the Rockies failed this offseason when in reality you're 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 setting yourself up for the spending offseason next year. If the foundation proves itself this year, if the young guys prove that they are solid, you start then entering in the we gotta get a we gotta get some arms. We gotta get X, we gotta get Y, we gotta get Z. That's what you can start doing. But until the Rockies get there. You know they gotta they gotta make sure that they're they're actually you know hanging in there first. But I I, I don't I, I again I'm, I I gotta disagree with the Rockies offseason being a failure. Boring, not that exciting, sure. But I really don't think the Rockies failed so much this offseason. But anyway, speaking of big off seasons, the Denver Broncos made a a big change yesterday and I'm curious if that's going to change fans mindset as we're, you know, getting going to enter in the usual summer. Abs and the Nuggets will uh take care of being the successful teams and handle uh, handle things going forward and then what happens in the middle of the summer and into the fall when it's Broncos and Rockies time. Let's talk about that coming up here on segment number three of today's episode of Locked on Rockies. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel's got you covered for all your sports betting needs. They got you covered for all the major leagues out there. Maybe you want to get in on the NBA. Maybe you're getting really excited about a certain big basketball tournament that takes place this month. Well, you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins at FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on for that chance to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. You can bet on all the action like quick bets, live same game parlays. Maybe you want to bet on points and rebounds. For the Joker and the Nuggets, you can check it all out there. They got exclusive prop bets and fun stuff there. You can get in on the spring training action if you want to, you know, start testing your baseball knowledge here in the spring. Lots more all on the easy to use FanDuel app. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on for your chance to get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. This is the Locked On Rockies podcast for free and streaming on your favorite streaming services here and on the Locked On Rockies YouTube channel where your likes, your subscriptions, your comments are the best way to help the show grow. Really, really appreciate all you tuning in and uh, joining in on the show. We get great comments all the time, so keep them coming. Keep letting me know what's on your mind, Rockies fans, and especially here for you Denver sports fans because the Rockies, uh, of course, announced that they're moving on from Russell Wilson yesterday, setting up another offseason of uncertainty for the orange and blue. And, uh, of course, they got the Super Bowl championships. They got the historic pedigree. But for now nearly a decade, the uh, the, the, the Denver Broncos have been unable to, to generate consistent success and, and do anything but avoid being a middle-of-the-road, middle-of-the-pack football team with uh, one of the biggest positions constantly being one of the biggest issues for them. Again, there's a lot more similarities between the Rockies and the Broncos than people think, but the Broncos get the benefit of having postseason success, also being a team that's been around a lot longer. But I am curious, after, you know, this uh, as we talked all offseason, as we've gone through, and as Rockies fandom and passion and care about the Rockies at the end of last season was I would argue at an all-time low, where season lack of direction, and and, and, the, and so forth, and so uh, and so on and so forth. I think the dedicated Rockies fans watching every day when the, when the kids started playing, you could start seeing some stuff that's more interesting and more exciting. But I I, I am curious because because I'll, I'll be you know being abundantly clear, I'm a football and baseball guy. Like it, for me, my sports fandom, I like to watch baseball and football the most. So I spend the most of my time watching those. I know I need to be watching the Nuggets and the Avs. I know that. <laughs> I just don't watch basketball and football nearly as much. But I do, you know, I tune in to see the greatest player in the world and I tune in to see this incredible hockey team. The Rockies are giving you the reason to tune in as saying, hey, here's this next generation of guys. Here's a bunch of young guys that could be your next exciting young core of players. The Broncos are going through the same exact offseason that we have gone through since Peyton Manning. Who's going to be the quarterback? Is the quarterback going to pay in out? Are the Broncos going to be able to do this? Are they going to be able to handle this? I, you know, the coaching carousel that they did. I, I mean, I know that this comes up a lot for me. I, but again, this is when, when I think about my two fandoms, I can't sit here and I mean, and this is Rockies Homer coming up, but you know, full full admit. But I think the Rockies will be a more entertaining team as a whole than the Broncos in the big moments. But the Broncos also could do something great. The Broncos are a team that are they are willing to make a big move. They are a team willing to make a big splash. They went out and got Russell Wilson, they got Peyton Manning. They've done big things before. Whereas the Rockies haven't necessarily done that. So so I can see why if a big name quarterback comes in. And, and fans get re-excited by the prospect of, of a quarterback helping a Broncos team get to the next step. Obviously, that's going to take over. But I do wonder, is a middling Broncos season going to be more entertaining and exciting than this 2024 Rocky season? I'm not fully confident that it's going to be. I mean, the Broncos have been mostly boring to watch for a while. 
when you really compare it to other teams in the NFL. And the Rockies have been boring to watch compared to most teams in Major League Baseball. But I still think that the Rockies 2024 season has the potential to be more exciting than the Broncos 2024 season. But I bring this up because it's how it goes. I mean, we're going to get to June. A training camp's going to be there. And hopefully the Nuggets are hoisting another Larry O'Brien. And we can focus on that being the most exciting thing. But the conversations are going to shift. And eventually the dog days of summer are going to come. And the Rockies are going to have to keep the interest of fans. And I'm curious if they're going to be able to do it uh, as they face another season in which the Broncos are going to have a huge offseason with ha lots of headlines to follow uh, there as well. Folks, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Rockies. Thank you so much for tuning in and making us your first listen of the day. We're free and streaming on your favorite streaming services and on the Locked on Rockies YouTube channel where you can be part of the show and you can help the show grow by liking the videos, leaving comments, and subscribing to Locked on Rockies on YouTube. For your second listen of the day, check out Locked on MLB. If you need more Colorado sports coverage, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Avalanche, Locked on Nuggets, Locked on Buffs, they got you covered here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Until next time, I'm Paul Holden saying so long from the Locked On Rockies podcast.